Hello, everyone. Welcome to Clarity 16.0.2, Supportability and Feature Training. My name is Dave Sprague. And in this section, we will review several enhancements for the hierarchy workspace. So what's new? First, within the grid itself, now investment details can be edited in uh, from within the grid view of course you need to have the proper investment permissions but you can edit any of the cross object grid content as a reminder in the 1601 release this grid was uh, a view only area secondly from the in hierarchy blueprints all custom sub objects are now available to be configured as modules so all sub objects across all investment types are included in the modules list within a hierarchy blueprint. Thirdly, related to hierarchy per period metrics. So stock and custom per period attributes are available for creating hierarchy per period metrics. So these per period or TSV attributes, whether they're stock or custom, that are configured on projects, ideas, and custom investments can be used to define calculation hierarchy per period metrics. Lastly, shared views within, uh, saved views within the hierarchy are now available for different hierarchy instances. Users can see all hierarchy saved views across different hierarchy instances, specifically those that are identified as shared and default. So why is this important? So from the grid perspective and the fact that it is now editable, we're really just, this is a capability to further adoption. User expect investment details to be edited directly from the grid itself without having to drill down to those details. From the hierarchy blueprint perspective, we're making custom sub objects available as modules, again, to drive adoption. These administrators configuring blueprints are now able to configure any sub object and make it available to their users in a given hierarchy. Per period metrics. So these, the hierarchy per period metrics convey meaningful insights to stakeholders. And we will certainly demonstrate that. From the hierarchy views perspective, being available for different hierarchy instances, to be consistent with projects, ideas, and custom investment, investments, enabling saved views, especially those that are shared in default, to be available across different hierarchy instances truly improves that overall end user experience and not forcing users to create brand new views for each hierarchy. So what's changed? We talked about the um, the hierarchy grid being editable. So those items that are included in the hierarchy, projects, ideas, and custom investments, those details can now be edited directly from with the grid, within the grid without having to drill down. Um, the flyout remains uh, view only, and the tree and board views don't support user edits. So the grid is the primary location to perform updates including bulk updates that is also available and field level security will be enforced in the hierarchy grid this is an example of the bulk update experience from within the hierarchy grid itself um, so logic is in is in place to ensure that investment type updates are are uh, <clears throat> presented for their respective updates so for example projects Project updates will only update the project fields. You know, portfolio epics, you're only going to trigger updating the uh, the portfolio epics and so on. So you can see the, the different groupings that are up there in the bulk edit user experience. And then when you make an, a manager change for project, you're not impacting the other investment types. And again, field level security is also supported, uh, enforced in this area. Blueprints being of all uh, custom sub objects being ad, uh, available as configurable modules, it, just like it sounds. So when you navigate into the hierarchy blueprint, you select the modules area, all available 
custom sub objects are available to be configured as as modules. Um, in the 1601 uh, release on the on the right hand side, um, there were a prescribed set of sub objects that were available. Uh, but now in 1602, you know, you, you get your properties um, and, and et cetera, it's risk issues, changes, financials, but then you also get uh, are included or all the uh, custom sub objects. From the um, sub object, the custom sub object experience, you know, as it's configured, the information, uh, you know, the module is presented. And then for those investments uh, that are using this sub object, the information is displayed um, and you'll be able to make the appropriate edits if you have the appropriate permissions. And again, field level security is also uh, enforced in this uh, area as well. Per period metrics. So, Stock and custom per period, um, you know, TSV attributes are available for creating hierarchy per period metrics. Uh, the calculation metric type is the one that's supported. Um, and from the view options grid, hierarchy me metrics are available as per period metrics. And then the totals uh, metrics are available from the column panel. As you can see in the upper right image there, for a calculation metric, there is a new type called per period. And when that is selected, metric one and two are going to be limited to, or the, so the available metrics are those that are you know, TSVs uh, by nature. Very exciting, very powerful feature. The save views um, being available across different hierarchy instances. Um, users can see all these views across different instances, especially, especially those that are defined as shared and default. Favorite or private save views are not available to other users across uh, other hierarchies. Uh, each configured module, such as an investment or, uh, inv or risk, uh, save views are specific to those respective modules. So this, is a, this approach is consistent with the other uh, areas such as projects, ideas, and custom investments. So let's take a look at the demonstration. We're going to go through the, you know, show that the fact that the hierarchy grid is editable. We're going to take a look at the blueprint and the custom sub object configuration options. We're going to use TSV attributes to create a calculation hierarchy metric. And then we'll recognize that save views are available to other hierarchy instances. Okay, so let's jump into the product. All right, we are going to land right here. We are in hierarchies. We are on a selected hierarchy. I'm in the investments module. And you can see there are a few other uh, modules configured. Um, I'm looking at this uh, from a, a, a quarterly perspective. I have basically four quarters of you know, some met per period metrics in place. I've got some widgets in place. And uh, we're going to first take a look at um, the editing capabilities of the grid. So I can, um, oops, I can select uh, you know, an area here, make an update. I can change any one of these guys to um, another value. So you can see that these are editable areas. I can even change the name. Uh, the flyout remains read only, regardless. You know, you have the flexibility to do configuration and bring in any bits of data that you want, but that remains uh, read only. Um, from a bulk edit perspective, I can go ahead and select all and hit edit. And um, I have um, lots of uh, capability here as far as editing the different types. Um, the, this information, the appropriate metrics and the totals are not editable. The hierarchical information is not editable, but I have in front of me progress, right? I can change all that to start and let's just make it all. And again, 
it's going to preview what the change will be. It won't make the change until you hit save, just like all the rest of um, the um, bulk edit capabilities and other grids. So I'll just go ahead and make that change. And and that's the the capability here afforded to um, the editable grid. So let's jump and take a look at blueprints. So I'm going to go into uh, just you know notice the modules that are configured here for this particular hierarchy. Uh, I'm going to deselect all here, and I'll just go into blueprints in the administration area. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll go to my program hierarchy. So when we're using, I'll select edit, and I'm going to select the modules area. And now you can see all the different available uh, modules that are available. I recognize assessment here as a custom sub op sub object that is available. I'll go ahead and publish, promote that, and return back to my hierarchy, and you will see the assessment area, right? I can click on that and I can see that there's a few ent uh, entries here. I do notice that this is, uh, the way I've configured it, I've got the investment here. So I know it's specific to one of the entries, uh, one of the investments that are in, in this uh, listing of hierarchies. Um, so I can see that. Then let's go to, um, like I can go here and I'm just going to delete this investment. And we'll let the screen refresh. And what I want to do next is just go back to that assessment um, module that's been configured and just show you the effects of, you know, you can configure the um, so custom sub objects, a lot of flexibility there. You just need to be aware that if you don't have uh, an investment that's using this sub object, then the information will be blank. So you just need to be aware of that. So I'll come back to the investment area. All right, so let's switch gears and talk about um, metrics serving as um, TSVs. So I want to call your attention to the total here. I have net profit as a total, and I have net profit as a per period. Uh, like I said, I've got four quarters here, and it looks like as the, um, the year moves on, our net profit is actually increasing. So that's very insightful. So how did I position this here in the first place? Um, well, first off, in the per period metric section, the um uh what is it uh I go there net my net profit is one of the entries that is available and included if i go to my column panel i'll just collapse that and get to the totals net profit is a total so that's configuring it for view just like any other metric any other tsb metric whether it's a total or a per, per period metric. So let's go to um, how do you create these? So let's go up into um, view options again. We'll look at manage metrics. And I've got my normal aggregation and calculation. For this example, I'm going to talk about calculation. Um, and I have my net profit entry here. I'll open this up. And you can see there's a new um, uh, radio button here to determine if you want to create a per period metric versus a standard metric. So this is a, you know, I'm in kind of edit mode um, and I see the per period is selected. It's using plan benefit minus plan costs to determine that profit. So um, how did I create that? So I'm just going to go into the new mode and just show you the behavior. I'll stay in standard and I'll pick this, um, you know, planned uh, benefit and I'll pick uh, minus uh, subtract and um, plan cost. And I can create this as a standard metric, right? But if I want to create this combination as a TSV, 
I need to select per period. Now you notice that those two attributes that I just selected disappeared, which leaves just the totals here. So I have a many, many um, uh, metrics available to me now to create a TSV as a metric. So this is almost like a, a very, very unique way of creating um, some additional uh, metrics that generate uh, some interesting insights. Now, you notice I had the per period selection here for um, creating uh, a calculation metric. If I slide over to aggregation and I select new, I don't have that additional option. So uh, the calculation area is where you would be to create TSVs for use in the hierarchy grid. Okay. All right. Um, oh, and the other thing I wanted to talk about was the um, the widgets. Uh, widgets can also support um, aggregating um, these TSV metrics. So I'll just go into this guy, go into edit. Uh, net profit, and you can see my the the metric that is available to me. Net profit um, is just a, a calculation metric that I cre created as a TSV, and now that's going to basically summarize for me or aggregate for all of these investments for the periods in view, the ground totals. I mean, the the net profit. So that is very exciting as well. All right, let's take a look at save view. So I'm here in my grid. And remember, I've got um, different modules deployed. I've got various widgets. I've got um, my different totals and, and uh, per period metrics deployed along with some um, column data that is interesting. So I've got my global TSV. I'll just go ahead and save that view now because what I remember, I changed the progress to all. So I'm gonna go ahead and come out of hierarchies and I'm going to select digital banking and I'll land on my grid and notice I have the global TSV uh, view here available to me. Um, there's a lot more investments obviously added to this uh, so there's different details here but the, the same widgets are available, same columns are available sort order was the hierarchical level was the sort order same grant totals and um, per period metrics now you may notice the assessment module is actually not here well okay well that is because uh, we just have a different blueprint i'll come out to um, the, the main hierarchy listing i do have the blueprint field available so you can see the the um, global compliance hierarchy program that we were on at the beginning uses the program hierarchy and this guy uses something called the hierarchy default so therefore the assessment module was not deployed all right so that covers off on the demonstration and that concludes the demonstration today uh, for the hierarchy updates update section i want to thank you for your time and hope to see you soon Thank you.